and low volume swing it is power spare or mist blower and ultra low volume it is you will be spare or electro and spare and spraying with different uh, sprayers you can see here it is uh, they are uh, utilizing in different props for spraying these things and the granular application you know highly toxic pesticides are handled safely in the form of uh, uh, granules uh, granules can be applied directly to the soil on the soil or the plants it includes the various methods of applications granular application here it is shown uh, how different equipments are utilized for these things we will be covering it later on in there some other slides and different granular granular application methods are like like broadcasting it may be the farrow application it may be the sarrow side dressing it may be the spot application rim application root zone application and pralinage application the surface of banana sakar intended for planting is streamed and sakar is dripped in wet clay slurry and carbofurin of 3 is sprinkled to control the burrowing nematode basically for controlling the nematodes this uh, pralinage is doing doing that say this side dressing it is shown in this crop and the root zone application it is shown in the granular application pralinage pralinage in the banana sakar and the rim application has shown in this here and the farrow application is being shown here so a uh, seed pelleting you could see that insecticide mixed with seed before sowing and uh, sorghum seeds are treated with the chlorophyll first like 4 ml per kg in 20 ml of water and shed dry to control the shoot fly the carbofurin 50 spray and the immediate chlorophyll is directly used as dry seed dressing this is a uh, insecticide against cotton sucking pests so these are the some of the seed pelleting we do you know that protection of seed is very important as seed dressing and seed pelleting is very important for the industrial perspective so seed pelleting process here i have shown the adhesive and seed it is coated on seed with the adhesives and some filler material is added and filler material sprinkled on coated seeds and pelleted seed and shade drying will be there and after shade drying it may be shown and seedling do should uh, root drip it is very well known practice in the villages you are you have seen that it is control at early stage phase in rice and control sucking pest and stem borer in early transplanted crop or shallow field lined with the polythene sheet is prepared in the field to this 0.5 kg urea and 2.5 liter of water 100 ml of chlorophyll first in 2.5 liter of water prepared prepared uh, separately and poured the solution is made up to 50 liter with water and the roots of the seedling in uh, boundaries are steeped in the for, for 20 minutes before the transplanting generally this root is dipping is because it is goes into the systems and it, thus it gives the protection from the insects and the seed treatment is in sugar cane you know that's a smaller pieces Uh, this is like uh, 10 inches, uh, 8 to 10 inches. Uh, this is on the seed surface to cut, and that is very important to treat. Uh, treatment of this very important because some kind of disease, some kind of pest may affect on that. So treatment of sugar cane with uh, sugar cane seed with 0.05 percent malathion for 15 minutes to protect them from the cells. Treat the sugar seeds in 0.05 mg of 70 WS at the rate of 170 gram per hectare and 7 gram per liter. Deep for 15 minutes to protect them from the termites. So this is the set treatment, and the trunk stem injection is done. Uh, this method is used for the control of coconut pests like black-headed caterpillar, mites, etc. Drill a downward slanting hole of 1.25 centimeter diameter to a depth of 5 centimeter at a light of about 1.5 meter above ground level, and inject 5 ml of monocrotopus. Now these are the pesticides. So many pesticides have already restricted use or banned, but still I have what are the methods I have. I, my intention is to show what are the methods is being utilized to control this kind of things. And for pseudo stem injection of banana and injecting gun or hypodermic syringe is used for the control of banana aphid vector of bunchy tough diseases. And padding is is also done. Stem borers of mango, silk cotton, and cashew can be controlled by this method. Bark of infested trees removed or uh, tree sides leaving bottom on a slab. A small quantity of absorbent cotton is placed on the exposed area, and five to ten ml of monocrotopus air is also again used. Close the flap and cover with the clay and other with the fungicides. So these are the things, and the swabbing is also done. Coffee with white borer is controlled by swabbing the trunk and branches with linden one percent suspension. So root feeding in coconut it is also very common. You know, in coconut plants, uh, basically it is very tall tree, uh, tree and uh, so the uh, going upstairs and sometimes infestation on the leaves and all those things it may. Uh, may be difficult to control so in that case we cut the we uh, expose the root whatever the going tender roots are there in that root which slant cutting is there and then after that we whatever the desired insecticide or we have to we have to put on we make a solution of that and we get the slant cutted it is on 
uh, we go pesticide we used to keep in a pollution sheet we enter that is a slant cut uh, there is a route into that deep into that and after that when the, it will be automatically it will be uh, fed up by the plants and it will go to the systems and does it controls the insect pests and uh, uh, generally in coconut and tall very tall trees it is referred and the root where it is very prominent roots and it is thicker in size so it will be very helpful for in case of coconut and soil rinsing it is done the chemical is diluted to water and solution is used to drain the soil to control the certain subterranean and pests like chlorophyll pyrifos dimethyl is against in cartons and soil mildew works and a capsule placement you will, you will be finding some of the systemic poisons could be utilized in capsules to get toxic effect for a long period in banana to control the bunch eat of vector and the insecticide is filled with gelatin capsules and placed in the crown region generally it is used and baiting you know that uh, toxicant is used in bait generally it is very much popular in that bait for the giving the bait for the rats so it is a uh, some of the insects we can control like coconut rhinoceros beetle rats and spider can be controlled to the uh, to the baits and poison bait traps we used to see and how the formulation is being made i am not covering going, going not going into the details of that and different bait applications here i have shown and some fumigation application is there fumigants are available in the solid or liquid form and in soil storage and trunk it may be done and to control the nematode generally we use to you apply this fumigants liquid fumigants like ethylene bromide or methyl bromide uh, carbon tetrachloride etc and soil fumigant like aluminum phosphide are recommended in go downs to control the stored product paste aluminum phosphide half to one tablet is inserted into the affected portion of coconut tree and plugged with the cement or mud for the control of red palm weevil. And this is the soil fumigation measures in that is some of the Western countries, it is very much popular, but our countries we have also started on that. And storage fumigation is being done here and trunk fumigation with the aluminum phosphate tablets, phosphate tablets basically. And pesticide application equipment. And now we'll be coming to the pesticide application equipment. So you have seen already, I have covered in that also, but we'll giving the emphasis on the what are the applicators. Granular spreader, spreader, spray output equipment, control bullets, small capacity sprayer, hydraulic sprayers, and uh, generally we just use uh, for dust formulation, duster is used. Duster is a machine or equipment used for the applying the chemicals, which are in a powder form. The small particles, uh, this one to 10 micrometer may be advantageous for complete coverage with dense foliage is important. Application rate is 25 to 55 kg per hectare. And duster application, dust application must restrict to period of low wind velocity, not more than three meters per second, and moderate air temperature. So these are the dust application and granular spreader. It is drop spreader or rotor spreader is there. And sprayer will be coming. Spraying is employed for variety of purposes, such as application of herbicide in order to reduce competition from weeds, protective fungicides to minimize the effects of fungal diseases, insecticides to control the various kinds of insect pests, micronutrients such as manganese or boron or uh, functions of sprayer, you know, the main function of the sprayer is to break the liquid into droplets of effective size and distribute them uniformly over the surface of space to be protected. I was telling in the initial of my lecture, the right time, right place and right amount. So getting the right amount to the targeted place, sprayer, function of sprayer is very much important. Another function is to regulate the amount of insecticide. That means how much it should be there, not the excessive amount to avoid the excessive application that might prove help harmful or wasteful. So different kind of squares, you know, it is a, we know that according to the source of energy, it can be divided according to the application rate, the source of power. So according to the source of energy, it can be hydraulic energy, synergy sprayer, gaseous energy player, centrifugal energy player. So a source of energy, when it is hydraulic energy player, some of the examples of the hydraulic energy sprayer are lever operated knapsack sprayer, rocker sprayer, food sprayer, hand completion sprayer, tractor completed, operated boom sprayer. And a gaseous energy sprayer is a air carrier sprayer, mist blowers. And the centrifugal energy sprayer, for example, is spinning this sprayer. And when it is over considered application, application rate, so it may be, I already mentioned, it may be high volume sprayer, it may be low volume sprayer, and it may be the ultra low volume sprayer. And according to the source of power, manually operated sprayer, that means lower operated knapsack sprayer, stirrup pump sprayer, rocker sprayer, food operated sprayer, or bullock operated sprayer will be bullock operated boom sprayer. A tractor or power sprayer operated sprayer may be there. It may be the boom sprayer, mist sprayer, or air assisted sprayer, or electric power operated sprayer, motorized knapsack sprayer, electrodynamic uh, sprayer, or electrostatic power. And sometimes aeroplane and drone operated sprayer utilized 
in foreign countries where the coverage area is very high and where the land holding is very high, not only the few acres or few biggers, but the where the hectares of land to be so operated uh, uh, with the uh, uh, treated with the pesticides or herbicides uh, or insecticides. In that case, this drone or aeroplane in the short height to two to a uh, three meter height, they used to move and they can spray entire land in a very short span of time. So. This is if again we can we can we can think about that in a broadly we can classify that chemical sprayer maybe the knapsack sprayer, food petal sprayer, our traction sprayer, tractor mounted sprayer, aerial sprayer. Previously I was elaboratively I was telling, but very common for our tractors here I am showing in these presentations. And the basic applicator I already mentioned. What are the things will be there? It is at the applicator also since for air I have, I was mentioning about the aeroplane and that the ground tra tractor operated, boat operated, band operated, and the Crack and crevices here that uh, so applicator may be there. Some of the applicators of the spot spot application it is may be there for vessel application for space treatment for a tree stem injection it is I already mentioned and roof for for uh, deeper treatment is may be there. Some of sometimes the weaking effect will be there on the plants and uh, through that weak it you can uh, uh, tra transfer to the leaves of the plants for leafy vegetables it can be done. The foliar applications and the soil injections. And the tillage application during rainfall with the irrigation also some of the pesticides can be utilized, applied. And the other equipments for rubbing and dipping bats and even the controlling the uh, these are, uh, vectors of uh, paste of uh, these are, uh, uh, cattle that can be utilized. Some of the equipments and uh, through drenching of their the body with the uh, pesticide solution, sometimes it helps. And the weight suspension, the dispensers may be there, foggers may be there. Dusters may be there and chemication, as I was mentioning with the irrigation, it can be applied. And it, the, if we operating pressure of the discharge of the depressures, if we consider about that, liver operated knapsack sprayer may be there, steer pump uh, sprayer may be there, rocker sprayer, food operated sprayer, tractor operated sprayer, and liver operated sprayer, generally operating pressure is on to 3 kg per centimeter square and discharge rate is 500 ml per minute. And steer pump uh, sprayer, it is operating pressure is on to 3 kg per centimeter and this size it is 500 ml per minute. Rocker sprayer, it is 14 to 18 kg per centimeter square and this size it is 1200 or 1200 ml per minute. Foot operated sprayer is 20, 70 to 20 kg per centimeter square and this size it is again 1200 ml per minute. Tractor operated sprayer, it is operating pressure is 21 to 55 kg per centimeter square and this size it is 150 to 190 liter per minute. So sprayer components, if we think about the, what are the components of a sprayer, say so it should be, it should have on a tank, on pump, or a strainers, agitation, pressure gauze, hoses, or flow control assemblies, distribution system, and nozzles. Basically, these tanks is used for the storing the whatever the pieces of formulation we are utilizing by making the solutions we can put in the tank, and the pump will be there to operate it, to clear the pressure. Some stainer should be there to filter the, uh, the, the what about the materials, which is what is not desirable to enter into the nozzles. And some agitation may be there into the pump so that, uh, into the tank, so that always it should be there in suspension form, not there will be no precipitation of the molecules or the materials should be there in the tank. So agitation should be there and some pressure which has to be maintained. So pressure gas, gas should be there. Some hose, hoses are there and flow control assemblies are there through hoses that can be actually uh, uh, apply application can be done and distribution seven uh, system is also important but the most important thing is that the nozzles so nozzles will be covering in detail and, uh, and that's also i mentioned and it's also i mentioned and the spraying pieces if you can find that a minimum spray volume record and actual spray of volume applied basically this is the efficiency is how much area is there and why, how much we can you know, reach to, uh, to, we are able to reach. So that ratio, minimum amount, uh, minimum spray volume required and actual area how we want to recover that ratio into 100 is called the spraying efficiency. And the spray nozzles I was telling, spray delivery pattern nozzles are classified by the spray delivery pattern, spray angle, discharge rate, construction materials. Nozzles used in outside, used outside of the specific rates and pressure will not work accurately. So amount of material applied, so depending upon the nozzles, it can be decided how much amount to want to reach to the actual target or area or the orifice size. Uh, it depends, uh, the, depending upon the orifice size, the droplet size also different. Uh, so droplet size depends. So sometimes the coarse droplet, if it is there, 
So it is see bigger in size and minimize the off target drift. And the, when the droplets are very fine, see maximize the surface coverage. So fine uh, droplets are desirable and distribution and droplet pattern uh, is entirely dependent on the nozzle. So nozzle is very much important for component of a uh, design sprayer. And uh, this control the amount and determine the uniformity of application, affect the coverage and influence the drift applications. And it is generally made of brass, not used for the abrasive materials, or maybe the uh, plastics, or hardened stainless steel, or maybe ceramics. So based with the wettable powder and dry level, so these three are, uh, these two basically hardened ceramic and ceramics are very much important for that. And these two parameters also important, the volume mean diameter and the number mean diameter, sometimes you will be finding, uh, uh, what is that? This, if we arrange the uh, these in the large droplets and smaller droplets in two part of the that that half portion of the smaller droplets and half portion of the larger droplets if we give a mean of that so the volume mean diameter is that portion out of the top portion is coming and uh, in between of that half of the spray volume and half of the spray volume of the larger droplets in between the what is the diameter it is coming it is volume mean diameter again if it is if we arrange in size according to size bigger to smaller size where the median point will be coming. So in that case, the middle point will show that number mean diameter. And always the BMD is more than the uh, NMD. And nozzle size, as I am mentioning, the spray flat spray tips, it could maybe extended range flat fan, drip redu uh, reduction flat fan, or turbo flat flat fan, and uh, turbo, flat, uh, flat, turbo flat fan, EI flat fan, and turbo drop. And cone spray tips may be there, or end drips may be there. These are the different uh, type of uh, nozzles here I have shown. And uh, this spray pattern, if we go back, the solid stream may be there sometimes. Suppose we are applying it through jet, so it will be solid stream will be there. But sometimes we want to spray in the cover in a bigger area, so flat kind of spray may be utilized. See, so here is at least in third, or in the this on top, top, top figures, I have shown that flat spray and the hollow cone. So in between that middle portion, it will, it will be in cone shape and middle portion would not be covered, but the outer portion will be covered, but the full cone, it will be entire area, it will be covered. So in the picture, you can see when the full so flat spray we are utilizing, entire area is covering, hollow cone we are utilizing, it is the cone shaped area is covering, and the full cone, it is how much area it is uh, covering, it, it is shown in the pictures. And the spray patterns. And the full jet, it is a tip oriented. Only the generally, whatever the we used to sometimes, uh, uh, this uh, during holy, we used to spray something, snare, color, and all those things. So, through jet, it will be there, it will be like that. In that way, it will be only one point target, it will be there, and you will be coverage will be lesser. And flat fan pattern, the fan jet will be there. This is uh, tapered edges will be there, and the, it will be covering more. And the hollow cone type, you can see that it will be cone shape, it will be covered. And uniform cover is a full cover, I already mentioning, and full cover is as will be there. Sometimes is when the two uh, sprays are moving towards uh, through a machine, sometimes the middle portion is not covered. So overlapping is very important for the two spray. Suppose one row it is covering or three row it is covering. Again, when the machine will come back with the tractor or manually operated. So overlapping is important and some portion is left behind. So that time the full edges to be covered, this kind of sprayer can be utilized for that. For the turn and uh, the nozzle characterization characteristics, if we could think about that, spray pattern is very important. That is nozzle type, uh, a nozzle shape, a spray volume. That is nozzle diameter and nozzle pressure is also uh, and droplet size. It is dependent on the nozzle nozzle type, pressure and volume. So spray pattern is dependent on nozzle type and nozzle shape, and spray volume is dependent on nozzle diameter and the pressure. And this droplet size is dependent on the nozzle type, pressure and volume. And if we know about the pesticide, sometimes all well, that LD50 value is very important. Lethal dose we used to con uh, con uh, consider. Lethal dose means the 50% of the population, it is lethal for the 50% of the population. It will kill the 50% pollution. How much gram, milligram of the pesticide will, per kg is required, per kg body order, per kg things it will be required to kill that 50% of the population. So if it is less than 50, it is highly dangerous. And 51 to 500 is a warning, warning will be there. And 500 to 5,000 is uh, milligram per kg. It is some portions may be there. And we used to say more than 5,000, it is safer. But still, we, sh we should not say that pesticides uh, in more than 5,000 is as well as it may be the safer. Because no, nothing is safer in this. No, not a single pesticide, as you can say, the synthetic pesticide cannot be safer at the moment. But that time that malathion was used to, suppose people used to tell that malathion is uh, one of the safest pesticides. 
but in punjab uh, pakistan and during this green revolution afterwards some saga was uh, incident was there due to that people were suffering when the malakian came in a big big uh, ship and the when that people and uh, the deliverers they are uh, taking away this malakian from the ship to the land that time they used to carry that malakian on their back and uh, later on it found that their uh, back side was dangerously affected with the pesticides that malakian so it was not safe to them also so that's why it is uh, sometimes it may be safe when you are applying in a bigger sense we are telling but it's not a pesticide is safe in that sense and it is that overall that uh, uh, how the assembly is working that i wanted to show here it is it is very common picture you will be knowing here tank is there and some agitator will be there and what the, from that a tank uh, some uh, uh, this and throttling valve will be there and uh, and uh, one side the tank shut up and it will actually be come through the centrifugal pump from where it will go to the boom sections and we can spray that and spray otherwise we can at at the attach with a spray gun and through that we can apply so this is a, one of the schematic diagram on that and the granular applications as i already mentions and uh, some of the things we have to mention about that uh, while while we were, while we are dealing with the pesticide the before of spraying we have to think we have to put on the protective gear we have to rinse and clean the systems after filling after filling check the leaks so when we are filling the tanks we have to think about whether leaking is there and adjust the equipment according to the recommendations and level and limit the drip and check the uniform of output see while you are uh, people are dealing with the pesticides generally in villages or in rural areas where people are they don't have about the sufficient knowledge about this pesticide how much dangerous it will be how much harmful it may be what is the direction of the wind they are not knowing and at what direction what are the dress to be wear they are not knowing so without knowing thing without their empty bare body they will go to the spray without me uh, using any mask any gloves any goggles so they will go to the uh, spray even they don't know how much toxicity or ld50 of the pesticides is there how much dilution is required and how much they they feel that 1 ml per liter is sufficient when it is recommended they feel that 5 ml or 10 ml will be far better because that can control good, good amount of space it is their imagination but while utilizing in bigger amount of pesticides in the huge amount of pesticide pest never control rather the pest resistance may be there some pesticide residue may be there and that can Im impact havocly in the environment in the human system and the entire environment as well so it is so before the spraying of the pesticides people should have sufficient knowledge of their dresses that protective gear should be there rains a system should be cleaned the whatever the pesticide is utilized being utilized or previously utilized people don't know so tank should be cleaned properly and after filling they should know that they, whether there is leaking that leaks may come to their body they come to the surface of their skin so that may be seen and uh, drifting is there or not and uh, output whatever they are getting they should be well uh, uh, that uh, that knowledge should sufficient knowledge they should have and uh, during the spray application they should again the protective uh, wiring is also a protective gear is very important and operate according to the owners manual so owners manual people in generally in the pesticide level uh, some instructions are there but the instruction is written in so uh, little letters that people are not able to read and i am sure 99.9% people they never read about the this what are the levels or manuals are telling so they never go what about the shop owners generally the pesticide sellers they used to tell they follow directly if the pesticide seller is telling it is required one or two ml per liter they don't bother about that about that they will get, get a bucket they will empty their entire bottle into the one bucket and they will spray whatever they think but the knowledge is very much important and manage has introduced the dsc program and dsc program is very much beneficial for them because through the dsc program they are able to negate some of the glimpses some of the knowledge is how to this deal with the pesticides how to deal with the obnoxious uh, uh, chemicals uh, harmful chemicals little bit knowledge is percolating and i hope in near future in uh, another 5 uh, to 10 years these people especially who are dealing with that pesticides and the local doctors i can say the plant doctors in the village level basically the pesticide sellers they will be well uh, having that uh, well uh, this on uh, deserved knowledge they will have and they will percolate that knowledge to the farmers and uh, checking of nozzle and clogging of the pattern changes so sometimes uh, whatever the nozzle uh, we are utilizing we if we want hollow cone type or flat cone type but we are not getting so sometimes no clogging may be there in the nozzles so people has to see and clean the nozzles with a soft tool or uh, not metal and never unplug the nozzle by blowing so it is very much seen in the rural area when there is a blockage in the nozzle 
they will open it they will just blow through their mouth so it is dangerous for them because i told already the ld50 of the compounds and how much compounds they are putting they don't know since if they are touching it through their uh, tongue and or mouth so it will it will be their body will be contaminated the toxicity may be high and if it is not they are not dying sometimes some pesticides they can go into their body they can retain in their body even we can find in ddt whatever utilized nearly 60 years 70 years before now it is getting into the uh, mother's milk and that means it is retaining in their body in the systems and the structure of ddt when you will be reading in the higher classes it is a butterfly like structures it is go into the plp and their cell structures and they sit in that and the years of resistance they can retain and generation of pathogen generation may come sometimes it may not generation but we think that through the genetically it cannot transform but it is staying in their people in people's health or body so sometimes it is harmful harmful so they should have the sufficient knowledge about the pesticides and after spraying people should flush the hoses tanks and nozzles it is very much important because they have to wash the flower hose they have to wash the tanks and the nozzles oil pump and the residues whatever the pesticides are there that is has to wipe up with the water and that should be decanted in a certain sufficient far away place in it uh, in the uh, uh, in the soil not in the, the everywhere it can uh, put uh, wherever you want that they cannot wash out and clean the equipment before making repairs switching the pesticides suppose repairing is required and it is sending to the uh, repair shop without we have contaminated pesticides so and uh, some liquids are there into that but that has to be removed it should be washed clean properly then it is to be sent and switching pesticides suppose one pesticide you are used in morning and uh, another pesticide with the same tank or same sprayer you are placing in the evening so you should have sufficient knowledge of the pesticides and you should wash the pesticide uh, tank of the sprayer nozzles of the uh, uh, sprayer so that the it is not contaminated and check operation and repair always you should check this one reuse and rinse with the rinse water do not use the herbicide designated equipment for other applications for instance having some of the herbicides are having a told as i mentioning the non selective that means kill a kill the indiscriminately to the all plants so it will be creating problem for them so in that case what will be happen now in that case uh, uh, do not use this herbicides uh, designated equipment for other applications so for the herbicide you have to keep separate equipments for that and applying pesticide sprays point shower it nozzle away from the lakes and fields so away from the lakes and fields you should do hold the uh, uh, this on uh, shower it should be in far away and so do not drape this on the host now uh, around the neck or waist so you should not drape that uh, neck or uh, waist uh, you should not take that on concentrate on accuracy that walking speed pressure and pattern and as i mentioned the wind speed at what direction this wind is blowing and at the direct direction i speak it should not disturb it should not come to the my mouse it should not like come to the spray or spraying uh, sprayers that uh, whoever is spraying in his body so direction you have to he has to select as per the direction he has to spray in that that is also important and then between the crop the spacing will be there so that is also important the thinking in this uh, their mind keeping in this, in their mind they have to spray in the field and applying pesticide uh, this on spray in the parallel swaths that means while you are applying a parallel in a single suppose five rows in a single direction again you have to come back with another five rows with a single direction that direction but the different direction will be different because giving uh, moving one direction and returning back while returning back there should be sufficient overlapping because in between there should not be gap because the in between crops may be may not get the pesticide molecules whatever we are desired so straight edges as a stating guide so straight is as you will be there and that that will be make a guide for the future movement of the tra- machines or whatever whoever is doing spray and maintain the straight walking lines so that we have to be jig jag it should not be there and uh, so that it should be some of the crops should not be left with, that with, with the paste so every entire crop should be covered and maintain proper overlapping as well as i'm mentioning that overlapping is very much important and trim the margins margins only receive one uh, half rates of and need not and need an adjusted application so margins has to be covered properly and we have to keep a record that at the what applic pesticide we have applied name of the concentration of the pesticide or name of the pesticide concentration of the pesticide how much we applied what are the target pests we have applied and method and date of application that record should be maintained by a farmer or a, but people don't do these things because this is the, the, the important while we are eating a very good fresh brinjal from the market 
and the glow and the glittering uh, the um, addition uh, brinjals will be finding generally people who are used to go for shopping we we prefer that this kind of a shining uh, brinjals but uh, you know sign for getting a shining brinjals what the people used to do they are utilizing more than 30 spray for a growing a single uh, getting a single brinjal so 30 spray is uh, holding by the uh, single uh, this one uh, brinjal and that is coming to our plates and we are getting that so how much dangerous it may be so that residues and what pesticide we have applied when you applied that record keeping uh, keeping is very much important and people don't do our farmers never bother to do this thing but this record should be maintained properly and to enhance the safety and benefits and to get the most form of the our sprayer so for that sprayer select the right equipment as i mentioned set it it correctly is proper operation procedures perform proper maintenance the pesticide level should be there it should be durable convenient to fill convenient to operate easy to clean and non absorbent corrosion resistant and resistant to damage our these are uh, some of the parameters has to be maintained and droplet size as i was mentioning that the insecticide and fungicides when it is very fine less than 119 micron and fine it is 100 to 216 micron and herbicide and post emergent herbicide uh, uh, herbicide pre and post emergent herbicides in medium and coarse droplet size like that 217 353 and for coarse it is 354 to 464 and for soil application of herbicides the very coarse will be okay it is more than 464 uh, microns and application takes weeks apply only where the pests are located don't allow active activities to reduce the effectiveness rain uh, not worrying etc it should be there tailor application of pest habit uh, pest habits uh, what are in graph control materials it should be there selecting of pesticide as i was mentioning the labeled for the pest or size suppose we are dealing uh, suppose nowadays it is very common when i used to go to the market and village areas for our programs i used to see the farmers are the, these uh, dealers they used to tag what pesticide with five kilo of urea five kilo of other materials they used to some buy pesticide they will be taking so keep taking this you have to mandatory you have to take purchase other material then you will get this pesticide but farmers are desperate they want that pesticide they want to have immediate liquid to a computer like that but they want they are tagged with other materials that uh, uh, forcibly this dealer is doing. So for that, sometimes it may be not labeled properly. Some old pesticide they are selling. So that has to be there. And label pesticide is very much important. As see the expiry date, when it is packed, that is very much important. Produce desired level of control and least disruptive. Uh, it is least disruptive to the environment, non phytotoxic economically practical and compatible with the tarp environment. So these are the some of the points and uh, spraying equipment. I also mentioned the frequency of the pesticide application should be selected on the basis of that that uh, spraying uh, frequency and availability of diluent. Whether it is water is available, oil is available, kerosene availability of the labor and uh, area requiring treatment, durability of equipment, cost of equipment, availability of the after sale service, operating cost, speed required to treat the area. So these are the some of the important parameters for selecting and use of spraying equipment. And pesticide formulation, when selecting, we should think about the application method, use of storage and mix, mixing, and risk when handling, risk of moving of the car, uh, moving of target, and the cost as well are important. And problem uh, associated with the spray, pesticide spraying, as I mentioned, there's nozzle blockage, insufficient, uh, inefficient pumps, and leakage may be there. And uh, uh, these are already covered, and the maintenance also I covered. And uh, daily maintenance is also important, clean with water pump, check pump, nozzles, etc. every day and inspect the mobile parts and all those things. And periodic preventive maintenance should be there, pumps and pipes and connections because the sometimes it is we are using for one crop and we are, the, we are keeping the entire sprayer for every uh, entire season. And next year we are taking. So there may be some clog uh, in the nozzles uh, and the pressure the, in connection pipe. So pressure goes may not working properly. Pressure regulator is not working. Registered may not work properly. So that we have to think before applying, uh, before uh, uh, preventing maintenance also very much important. So nozzles, booms, tank components, engine, we have to see every components of that. And off-season maintenance and storage is also important. All plant protection equipment must be stored in a cool and dry place and in shade. Equipment should be washed thoroughly with the plain water before storage. Grease and lubricant should be uh, applied to joints and surface wherever required to protect from the dust. So these are all, and from my presentation, I hope that our uh, region, uh, region participants, whoever is uh, uh, taken part, I have seen many uh, faculties, students, uh, research attorneys, 
are there in that. So that is very much uh, uh, pertaining. You know, the pesticide, without pesticide, we cannot imagine our agriculture as on date. And we hope that scientific application, scientific knowledge is imp important while in we are utilizing uh, these uh, pesticides. Because until now, we are scientifically, we will be dealing with this. Mm, uh, dealing with this, it is very difficult for us. So uh, nowadays, you can find that botanical pesticide, biopesticide, and all those pesticide molecules coming. But the problem is that problem with the education with the dealers. They are not, and the farmers, they are not well educated. Even they don't know how much a pesticide to be applied, when to be applied, what to be applied. And even when they are utilizing some biopesticide, or like Jibamrit, Bijamrit, they are applying. They are not well accounted, well accounted to the system. So until and unless they are well accounted to the system, they are not able to learn about the system. The natural farming will be daydreaming and will not be able to reach. And if we do these things in proper manner, in near future, I, I hope that the natural farming can be done within the 50, uh, within the 50 to 60 years of uh, this one, uh, within uh, 100 years, I can say, of the uh, uh, application of BGT and Indian field. So, uh, for this is the presentation uh, from my side, and now we can discuss. And if some queries are maybe there, so I can discuss. Uh, you can discuss with. Uh, so thank you, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. So I'll just come to the presentation uh, reason uh, that mode. I just uh, slide presentation. I just put it off. So now I request uh, Madam or Badolda so for discussion. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, now the session is open for discussion. Uh, especially, I think we can have some of the questions from online participants first. <coughs> from online participants? Do you have any queries? Okay, if not in the meantime, I think we can uh, have some questions from the offline session also. So, any participants from the offline session? So if you know, I, ma'am, I may uh, given chance to uh, discuss something. Actually, I uh, wanted to ask whether your uh, 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 this is an university is having agricultural chemicals division. No, no, sir. It is not biochemistry and agricultural chemistry division is there, and okay, also okay. the entomology deals with the pesticides. Okay. And uh, so there is question from offline candidates. Okay. And one participant come and see ask the question. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much, sir, for your informative lecture. So you have covered a lot of points, uh, which was quite beneficial for us. So I have one question, like uh, concerning the environment, like taking the environment into consideration. Which is the spraying method that is the most efficient? Yeah. According to you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Actually, uh, I, I didn't get your uh, question properly, but I, uh, whatever I heard that I, uh, I feel that you have should asked I about. Uh, uh, sir, should I repeat my question? Yeah, yeah, you can repeat. Uh, sir, when we take uh, environment into consideration, okay. Sir, based, uh, on different type of pollutions and also the future aspects of the environment. So, which spraying method, according to you, is the most efficient? See, uh, environmental, basically, when you are thinking about that uh, pesticide, as I was mentioning, pesticide, you cannot go for that. Uh, pesticide as such is not a go good for hen, uh, uh, environment. As such, it is not good because until unless we, when you started with the pesticide, the problem started in a huge way. But the, when we are considering about the different application systems, so some of the application, dust application, granule application, spray application, as I was mentioning, but the uh, most uh, uh, reasons, uh, oh, uh, 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 met, uh, important method, what I was telling, that granular application, what uh, you are doing, it should be, it is a targeted, uh, you should be applied in the right time, right manner, in the right place. 
so granular application is very important but about the when you are thinking about the different spray methods so that is you have to think the what kind of nozzle you are applying what kind of spot application you are doing whether you are uh, treating it this uh, on uh, vessel application or injections so injection method or target oriented application is very much important so as such uh, while you will be doing in a bigger way in the total entire area so that method cannot be sustained because it will be uh, never be it will be uh, in a single point it will be move around it will go here and there so targeted spot application is very much important either your vessel or the spray uh, this on uh, injection method it will be very much helpful and uh, what about the in, a, in a different kind of sprayers are there and nozzles are utilized you have to very much choose about the nozzles that what kind of are doing whether it is target specific on hollow cone or platform in a target specific manner it is reaching that you have to think about okay thank you so much sir yes sir yes ma'am thank you sir then there is another question that the question is should we go for application of insecticides and fertilizer at a time or in different time sir uh basically you see uh this application of pesticide whatever we are applying plant is taking in a different uh, not in pesticide or uh, uh, region uh, fertilizer format suppose you are applying in urea or ammonium sulfate so whatever the thing you will be applying it will come to the ammonium format and plant will uptake that uh, thing so until and unless it is in urea form that means plant are not able to take in urea form it has to be converted into ammonium that means nh4 plus it is a positive ion suppose you are applying a pesticide and pesticide application pesticide is cons consisting of some active ingredient will be there some uh, carrier material will be there like filler material will be there and some ad ad adjuvants will be there so adjuvants active ingredient on all those things based on their chemical characters it is very important suppose ddt so ddt i am telling it is a uh, organic molecule having a a butterfly like structure to benzene rings and cl3 on molecule cell so how much it is polarity it is do, uh, 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 producing based on that you have to think always it is not uh, uh, suggested that you can apply indiscriminately whatever the pesticide and fertilizer is there together you have you can apply some of the pesticides like uh, safer pesticide as i was mentioning you can go for the fertigation with together with that fertigation uh, pesticide and herbicide together but together mixing with that some chemical modification may be there in between so that it is not expected that always you should do these things together because we should gap have sufficient gap between the, uh, in between application of these things okay thank you sir so there is thank another you. question that uh, for spraying in la uh, large size plants suppose mango or coconut Hmm. which type of nozzle and spray pattern is suitable i already mentioned in my vision the tree and all those things it is uh, how, how much uh, uh, it is recovery is, is required and what type of nozzle and what type of pump is required for that one so in my lectures uh, spray pattern and all those things while i will be cover, covered i can find it uh, amount of material it is applied or if it is size based on that we have to select that what is the or if it is size and the droplet pattern will be there yeah either you have to go for the flat fan or any other these things so for bigger tree this generally generally we could go for the rocker sprayer so uh, generally we could for large tree like mango we could go for the rocker type of sprayer okay thank you sir and any question from online participant Avnish Kumar, are you there? Ma'am, I have a request from your side. Uh, yes. From you, that uh, can you send me that uh, throughout the entire program of who are the participants and yes, uh, who are. YouTube streaming. We are sharing entire program, sir. Yeah, surely it will be helpful for me. Yeah. Okay, sir. Sure. I'll send you the link. Okay, surely, surely. Okay, sir. Sure. And uh, any query from participant side? Hello, sir. Yeah. 
Imagible. Sir, can we uh, uh, apply by mixing contagion in uh, systemic fungicide? That's in case of uh, pesticide or insecticide. See, now, nowadays, contamic and, uh, contact and systemic insecticides, nowadays, different pesticide uh, combinations are there. It is available. But if we think about that, what is the mode of action? On his contact and on his, on his systematic. And based on the molecular structure of the compound, what is the chemical nature of the compound? You have to design the compounds. Suppose, I'm telling, imidacloprid you are doing. Some positive or negative points may be there. And you are doing some pesticide with dust formulation with their so basically, a uh, uh, contact pesticide you are you want to apply like pyrethrums like that. So you have to think whether that combination is compatible or not. Whether that study you have to conduct first until unless you are able to com conduct the compatibility for all uh, arena. Not only the uh, uh, whether uh, it is compatible in chemically, uh, whether the chemically the when you are applying to the field, some other effect will be there. Whether synergistic effect uh, uh, will be there, in antagonistic effect will be there. That has to be studied. And based on that, so pesticide combination can be made. Nowadays, it is the pesticide formulation. Combination formulation is available in the market and people are working on that. It can be done. It's not, I'm not telling it cannot be done, but it can be done, but with a proper study, sufficient study. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, any more queries from anyone? Okay then, uh, thank you Dr. Ray for your brief and educative lecture. So this has refreshed us, uh, this has refreshed us with the, on the topic of means application of your uh, pesticides and different e equipments and the application techniques. Thank you so much, sir. For thank your you, thank you. Thank you. So I expected to visit your place, but unfortunately I could not go there, but it is a big, huge experience from my side also. A uh, lot of participants were there, around 80 participants were there in the lectures. So I would like to thank uh, your Vice Chancellor, your authority, and uh, Professor Bhattacharya, Vadal Bhattacharya, sir, Anjumani Madam, and you as well as. Uh, so thank you very much. I thank you, the participants, for giving the, me this opportunity to present before this uh, August gathering. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And you are most welcome anytime you wish you want to uh, visit us. Surely, surely, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So see you then. Sure, sir. Uh, there is one announcement for the online participants. I hope all of you are listening. So, dear participants, please be in time. You are most of you are coming uh, by the end of the lecture session. So, please adhere to your time. And I just tell you that uh, today's session is over for online participants because we are having next after a short tea break, we will have our practical class. Again, from 2.30, we will have another practical session only. So tomorrow from 10 a.m., please join us, but please be in time. Your, your attendance is being monitored all the time, and depending upon the attendance or the time you have given for different lectures, accordingly, you will be getting the certificates. So please be, uh, be means sincere when you are joining the sessions. Thank you all. He is ready.